Hi guys, this is uh, the first video in the um, series for the uh, R2-D2 build, the full size one. Um, this is basically where I am at the moment. Uh, I've got a... Uh, this won't be the, the final dome, this is just a sort of temporary dome. Um, I was going to see if I could make something out of it. It's, a, it's an acrylic dome, 450mm diameter, which is 18, just over 18 inches, or about 18 inches. Uh, we've got a plywood structure for the framework. Um, somebody had uh, cut all this up and sold it as a kit. It's pretty good. It's not the fit isn't fantastic. I struggled a bit getting it together, but it, it's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to see how far I get with that. Um, but I've actually got a proper laser cut aluminium dome coming, and I'm thinking if I'm going to do that. Uh, I might try and upgrade the frame a bit, I'm not sure, we'll see. Um, there's a possibility of actually building one um, from 3D printed parts, so we'll see. Jury's out on that one still. Um, but also in the meantime, I've got, now these are all resin parts that I've ordered in, um, and they're all pretty good actually. So you've got the two, uh, the two vents on the front there. You've got the power coupler down the bottom, and then we've got loads of these. Now, the thing with resin is basically there's a lot of cleanup. It's very good, but there's a lot of cleanup. You see these big sort of lumps here. I've cut some of these back already. Um, so there's the seams, and sometimes you get bubbles in them and things. Um, it depends how how well it's been done, obviously. Um, and this is a typical example of sort of what you get. That light's not very good, is it? It's a bit. The sun's a bit bl uh, bright on it. But that's basically how they come. And then you can see what I've done on this one. I've uh, cut this piece open uh, and um, basically cut it, shaped it. It's not finished. It needs a bit more work. Um, so that basically you can get one of these once it's cleaned up. Make it look something like that. That goes over the top, and then the idea is the uh, hollow projector. If you have a bit of a slot instead of a circle, it can actually it can actually sort of move move around so that way or that way kind of thing. You can have a little servo on the inside, which will effectively make it look up or down or whatever you want to do. So <clears throat> that's just a bit of a, a glimpse at what's going on at the moment. Uh, this build is going to be a parallel build alongside the BB-8 build uh, and also the models that I build as well. Um, so uh, what I've got going on in the other room, it's really cold at the moment so although I usually work in the shed it's a bit too cold so sometimes I do a bit here in the kitchen. Um, let's put some light on. So these are more resin parts and this is just to give you an idea again of, of the work involved if you do decide to do this. Again there were massive great big, there's about I don't know half an inch of additional material on these four quarters, on the corners rather. Um, so I've sort of grinded and ground those away if that's the right word with the Dremel or a Dremel like device. Um, there's a bit of filling to do in here just to get rid of all the bubbles and bits and pieces. Don't get me wrong, they're really nice castings but there is quite a bit of prep to do. Uh, if I show you the inside of the arms for example, you can see all the bubbles there. So they will need filling. Um, as you can see I'm just sort of building this up um, to try and make them look a little bit neater. I've already put the holes through so they're going to hinge. So they can pull out like that, just like on the real R2 droids. So I'm going to do a bit more work on these now, just basically sanding. So I won't show you that. There's not much uh, more boring than watching someone sand something. Um, but I'll I'll do what I can, and then I'll uh, come back and show you the result. The other option for these, of course, is to 3D print them uh, or pay a lot of money and have them made up in aluminium. Um, but uh, I can't really go to that. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff going on, I can't really uh, justify that kind of cost. So it's going to be resin parts probably or 3D printed, so we'll see. I'll probably experiment with both. But that's it for now. I'm just going to do a bit more work on these parts and I'll give you an update a bit later on. Okay, um, I've just added a, 
coat of primer to R2's uh, utility arms. Uh, they're nowhere near smooth enough and flat enough yet, but by putting a, bit, a little bit of primer on it helps you see the imperfections, so um, all of this, you see, becomes very obvious. And then uh, I can fill it, smooth it, sand it, reprime it, and then I can see what it looks like again, and then just slowly build it up layer at a time. So that's the plan. Quick update on R2. This is the wooden frame. I'm still not sure if I'm actually going to use it because it's not quite square enough. You can probably see down this line that bows out slightly. I might take it apart and see if I can just reassemble it just that little bit more square or take a, I don't know, take a, um, take some power tools to the outside and just try and straighten those slightly bowed bits. So I don't know, it, it might be all right. It's, it's just the dome is superb. It's a proper laser cut aluminium shell. Uh, I bought from the States. It's absolutely superb. Uh, I've got my Lazy Susan, which is this bearing here. So the inner bearing will rotate. The outer one is fixed to the shell, or fixed to the body. Um, my original uh, disc for this I've, I've cut right back, um, leaving some, a bit more support where the shoulders for the, the um, legs are going to be. Um, and the idea is a motor will be on long fitted in here somewhere and his little wheel will rotate against this like a little hamster running inside a wheel and that's what will provide the spin. Right, <clears throat> this is where I've started uh, a very scary bit. Uh, cutting into the dome, 600 and something dollars this cost, it's a very expensive uh, part of the build but a very necessary one if you're going to want, if you want to make a, a proper job and make it look really really good I think I know I know you could make it out of other things but um, uh, for me because it's an ellipsoid it's not a it's not just a semicircle for me anyway it was important to get this um, if I was going to take this project on seriously anyway so this part and basically I've got the other dome behind me which I'm deburring the insides that's the inner dome this is the outer dome and the scary bit in question is cutting these panels out because you mustn't bend them and uh, distort them. So the first thing I've done, as per advice from the club, is labelled everything inside, all the panels, so that once they're on a desk like this I can identify them again. Um, there's a couple I'm not sure about, so there's one I'm going to leave, because there's, there's a lot of lines there, I'm not sure exactly which ones we need to do the cutting on, so I'm going to leave that until I know for sure. Likewise, this one, I can't get my little hacksaw in there, so I'm going to have to get a little Dremel wheel or something to do that. But basically, what I'm doing is, the way I'm doing this, this is actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I, th I was dreading this, um, so I just thought I'd share for anyone else who likewise is dreading the idea of starting to hack into this beautifully made laser cut dome. All I've done, I've just been to B&Q, that's for the UK, don't know what the equivalent is in the States, I know a lot of people that watch this will be in the States. Um, and it's just one of these, just a hacksaw but with a free end. And what I'm doing, and I've made a start with the, the usually the panels are joined still in four places, there's four parts left, just little tiny nodules if you like, you can probably just see up here. Um, so you've only got to cut a couple of millimetres if that. But what I'm doing is the first ones I'm going in this way and just very, very gently cutting upwards. I've done these two already. Um, and the secret with this I'm finding is, is just don't put any pressure on it. Just drag it backwards and forwards. Don't push. Don't try and do it too hard or too fast. Um, another tip I've run out but is if you're having trouble with this getting stuck on the aluminium is just spray a little WD-40 on it makes it glide better. But if you just literally, I'm not putting any downward pressure on it, drag it backwards and forwards. noisy but if you do it like that just take your time let the saw do the work it's really not too bad so they're coming off quite cleanly and not distorting anything I've just got a little bit of tidy up to do with a file on the end and then these can all be rubbed down and painted um, blue for R2 obviously and um, what other color if you're doing a different droid um, so this is the upper ones, and, and again you think, well, how are you going to do that? Well, eight, eight, ten, just 
let the saw do the work, just put a little bit of upward pressure on it, not too much, we're not trying to cut through it instantly and, and it just makes it so much easier. And that's how quickly they go through. Okay, that one's getting stuck a bit, so just come away, change the angle. Really light and slowly, just don't force it and it'll be okay. As I say, if you've got some WD-40, a little spray apparently makes it even easier. Now, I haven't deburred the inside of this. I didn't want to distort anything. I figured it'd be easier to deburr it once the pieces are off. I've written on here in indelible marker, that's P, P4 and P3, but what I'm also doing, because the indelible marker is not so indelible, it's coming off, I'm just using the edge of a sharp screwdriver here, and I'm just scratching in the panel numbers onto the reverse as well, just in case later all my, my black markers come away. <laughs> One, two, I'm supporting the thin pieces because that's the bits I'm most concerned about. And the ring at the bottom which we take away and then add later, that covers over some screws. Uh, for now I'm going to leave it in, piece, in one piece because I figure the longer that's loose and exposed the more it's at risk of being bent so someone tell me in the comments if you've made one of these already and that's the wrong thing to do please let me know but I'm thinking I'm thinking at the moment it's the safest bet is just to leave it on it helps the whole thing keep some integrity while I'm working on it that's the thought anyway and they really don't come off too bad so much easier than I thought it was going to be. That's P2 out, and that was my finger. So do take your time. It's very easy to make mistakes. I'm not sure about like this one here you see there's two sets of lines I think it's just the whole thing and then I'm assuming these are just done separately to create some interesting line detail later but I just want to see some reference picks before I commit myself on that um, so okay so now time to try these which I'm assuming will be pretty much as easy will be a stand-up job for this I think Okay, I'm going to do the hollow projector on the Okay, yeah, it's pretty much the same as the others. HP3, Hollow Projector 3, HP3, I'll, I'll just finish, but um, hopefully you, you got the idea and uh, hopefully it will help anyone who's, who's uh, been putting this on. Because I was looking 
looking at it, I've been looking at it for probably a week and a half thinking how on earth am I going to get the courage to start that. Pie panel, that's why. Pie panel 2, as in, look like pieces of pie. Just like on the top of a BB 8 head, if you've been watching the builds on that. Oops. We'll start with the top first. domes. I have seen some domes where people have to do a lot more than I'm having to do. Um, if anyone wants to know I'll give you the link. If you message me in the comments I'll, um, I'll put up a link where I bought this. Um, but bear in mind I think it was $450. I think it was in $167 shipping and then when it got to customs wonderful customs and eggs eyes wanted another £120 sterling to get it into the country. <clears throat> so that's why taking a hacksaw to it is not for the nervous. Piece. Well, actually, you know, I guess the centerpiece has to come out as well. center out. I think I probably do but I'm going to double check on that first. So anyway, he's almost made it lighter. Funny that. Okay so starting to look a bit more like R2 isn't it? So, I'm going to have to use a Dremel I think for this. But, uh, anyway I hope that's been of some help. Um, really the idea was just to help you if like me you've um, recently bought one of these you want to make R2 uh, and you've been looking at the dome thinking, oh, it wasn't cheap, it cost a lot of money, I don't want to wreck it when I get a hacksaw on it. I just found that a lot easier to cut up than, um, than I expected. There's a funny angle on the camera there, that looks like it's all bent up on that side, but it isn't. It's just the shadow and the light. And that's what we ended up with. Just a little bit of clean up to do with some files and a little bit of uh, wire wool. Uh, and then ultimately I think this whole thing is going to be really nicely polished with a very, very, I think, it, I think they recommend um, zero, 00 on the grade, uh, the finest wire wool you can get basically. So anyway, first real serious bit of uh, cutting work on R2. Uh, what I'll do actually, I'm just going to swing you around because on the other desk I've got the inner dome, 
which I've got suspended upside down in a bucket with a bit of sheet, a bit of a, an old decorating sheet there just so I don't scratch it too much but the idea on that is I'm just trying to deburr all the rough edges in the centre and there are a lot of them. It's part of the laser cutting process you get a bit of scag around the edges I don't know if you can see around here um, it's quite sharp but it's because of the internal corner or the internal radius it's actually quite hard to get rid of I've done a lot of these funny enough with a wood chisel uh, some sandpaper and uh, I've also this morning I've just been out and I've bought uh, a couple of useful, useful little tools uh, one being the cut the uh, sanding wheel on the end of the drill there and somewhere I think it's over there behind the water for the paints as um, just behind there I'll, I'll just move that and show you <coughs> it's just a little wire wool bit universal bit for the end of pretty much any drill Okay, so that's uh, I think that's it for this little part of the video anyway. I shall uh, come back to you later with something more uh, when I've got something interesting to show. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been of some help. Catch you later. Okay, I just thought I'd show you another little bit of this. Um, this is really just a clean up after cutting those out. You get a, I don't know if you can see on that, but you get a very small, I can put something behind it, maybe you'll see it there. It's very, just very little small notches where the original links were. And I'm finding if you, I'm just using a big file. Now, what you don't want to do is cut into the corners. Uh, so I'm just doing it very slowly, very deliberately. Just removing the top ones first. This is a new file, so it cuts nice and quickly. And what I'm doing there is I'm trying to keep all the pressure to the side onto the little notch I'm trying to remove not onto the metal here because I don't want to cut into that. So hopefully I've got a nice you get a nice square edge that way. But if you let it ride on the bottom on the other piece, the other face, then of course you can cut, end up cutting a notch in that. Which you don't want to do. Depending on when when you cut these, I I cut through the middle of the little the little bars. But if you cut right or left, obviously, which I inadvertently did on some of them, then obviously you've only, you've only got to re remove the notch from that side instead of this side. So it, you may have to clean up both parts. You may only have to do one. Take your time. I found after a few years of building models that if you rush it just takes more time in the end. edges but that's looking quite nice so there we go one outer head prepared almost prepared so I'm still not quite sure what to do about this one so I'm just anything I'm in doubt about I'm leaving for now or like this one I just can't get the hacksaw in there so I'm just gonna do that with a dremel later so okay right I hope that's been helpful it's lunchtime so I'm off I shall um, <laughs> see you in the next bit okay quick update on the R2 build um, over the last few days I've been quite busy on this. What I've done is I've, I've separated this bottom ring from the upper, from the outer dome uh, and I've um, 
I've got a very tight fit between the inner dome and the outer dome. I probably didn't need to put any screws through there at all, but what I did do is I've put three self-tapper, not sorry, three countersunk machine screws through both inner and outer dome that also go through um, the lip of the ring here, uh, and then glued the blue strip over the top so you can't see the screws. Um, the outer dome is now bonded to the inner dome, uh, I've just put these in just to make sure I got it all straight and central because that's a bit scary. I used, um, what did I use? Uh, Evo stick I think it was. Very very strong sort of um, all purpose bond. Okay another update on R2-D2. Um, because I'm not too keen on the wooden frame I've got it's, it's alright it could be used as a pinch but it's not particularly square. There's a lot of um, filing and sanding would have to be done to make it square. Um, so I've decided to try another approach. I'm going to 3D print a frame out of ABS, which is something that uh, is very useful because you can use acetone to uh, weld ABS together, no glue involved. So basically what it does is it just melts the surface of both parts um, and two become one, um, basically, is the idea. So um, yeah, so it's, it's a chemical weld, basically. Uh, now I can't take the credit for this, the credit for this goes to James Bruton at xrobots.co.uk He's the one that did the CAD drawings and was good enough to release them for the likes of me to be able to uh, build something pretty much the same. Um, he's light years ahead of me in, in all honesty. Um, but uh, he's got some very good ideas, he's very clever so, uh, so credit to where it's due. Um, it's his design, but he's made it freely available for um, anyone else to, to have a go. So that's what I'm doing. Thank you, James. And um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, have a little look at his website, his, uh, at his channel, sorry. It's uh, X Robots, uh, and his name is James Bruton. Okay, so the, while the frame is, uh, is going together, uh, I'm printing the next stage. Now, the problem I've got that he didn't have was... I've got an Ultimaker 2 Plus, uh, I think he was using a Lolzbot Taz printer which has a slightly bigger print bed than mine and the, the larger discs won't fit on my, basically each disc is, is made of four pieces, uh, the larger discs which are roughly 450mm diameter which is R2's body diameter pretty much won't fit on my bed, my print bed even in, in quarters so um, what I've had to do is is go back and teach myself a little bit about how to use um, one two three D design and split those quarters into eighths and then um, and then I'm going to have to bond them together. So I've got a lot more separate pieces to do. Um, not everything is going to have to be split, just the larger ones. Um, but it's a bit of a pain. But um, I should have done my homework first, I guess, and 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 got a printer with a with a bigger print bed. Hey ho. Um, Anyway, so, and over here, um, I've been preparing the dome. I've bonded the outer dome to the inner dome today, uh, and the both domes are secured to the, the, to the ring. Um, so this is the top pie panels, as I'm sure you'll instantly recognize, and I've given them all a deburr, a sand, um, a clean with hot, uh, hot soapy water, make sure there's nothing greasy on there and I'm about to start priming and painting them. I found what looks like a very close blue. If it's not, it's pretty nice, um, if it, even if it isn't the right one. So um, I kind of like it. So we'll have a look and see what these look like when they're painted. OK, that's just one coat of primer. I'm going to try and do this properly if I can make myself um, exercise a little patience. Um, and I'm going to do one light coat. If you, if you build up the paint too quickly, then you know the underneath never seems to really dry and you know if you if you knock it with something you just get great big dents in the paint so what I'm doing at the moment I hope this is gonna be enough I'm giving a very light coat of primer which I've just done and I'm gonna give it about 30 minutes and then give it another coat of primer 30 minutes and then another. I'm gonna do about three coats of primer three coats of top coat with about half an hour between hopefully that will give me a, a nice finish so um, I'll report back when we find out the answer Okay, the um, pie panels for R2 are sprayed. I think they've come up reasonably okay. Might try and get some lacquer on them as well, so 
it will protect the paint. I'm going to leave that to dry overnight. Um, it's enamel this paint so it will take a little while to dry whereas I usually try and use acrylics which are water based, easier to clean up and dry much faster. Uh, what else have I been doing? Uh, oh this is all electronic stuff. Um, I've been playing around with some flashing LEDs um, to do R2's um, uh, some of R2's lights and some of B8's lights actually so I've been doing quite a bit of both um, anyway um, that's that I've also bonded oh this is the um, this is the lowest section of R2D2 this is all 3D printed these are the bits that I've uh, uh, welded together it's a little bit it's got a little bit um, warped but what I'm going to do is the next layer is going to go back to back so the warps will be away from each other so when I when I uh, use the acetone and weld them together hopefully they'll pull each other straight um, might try heating it as well see what happens um, with a heat gun see if I can get it back into shape not quite sure I know with PLA which I've been printing most of BB-8 with um, you get it to 40 degrees it goes soft I'm not sure with ABS I think our temperature would have to be a bit higher but uh, I might experiment um, and I'll show you the dome shortly. The dome, the outer dome on R2 has now been um, bonded to the inner dome and fixed to the ring. Um, hence, starting to get these ready so that uh, we can start to make it look a bit like R2D2. Okay, this is R2's dome, which is now bonded. Uh, outer dome has been bonded to the inner dome, and the blue ring there is hopefully spaced in the middle if I've got it right, it's pretty close I think uh, and that's covering up the screws that hold the inner dome to the um, the dome ring at the bottom which is the adapter that uh, sits on the Lazy Susan um, I've got some spacers arrived today Ooh. Just focus. Um, so instead of having these silly nuts, I've actually got some proper spaces now, which I'm hoping will hold the dome at the right height. So I'm about to try that now. Okay, just a little bit of an update on R2. I've uh, got some of the um, blue panels painted. Um, most of these are just loose still. I'm just uh, leaving them here so they can really dry. It's been, I don't know, 24, 36 hours, something like that. But um, when I was messing around with the hollow projector, there's a tiny little chip there, so it's still not completely hardened. Um, so there's a couple of bits of, um, I've just used some, because I, I may ultimately open up some of these panels. At the moment they don't open, but I may ultimately have some that pop up with a little servo and do something interesting. So, But for the moment, to keep everything safe, I'm just using some servo tape, just a little bit, lightly, to just tack. So I've just tacked that on. That needs a polish. That's got some stains in it. But um, that's, I've just tacked this down um, just to keep it safe and out of the way. So this is now glued to the dome. The inner dome is fixed. Well, actually, the inner and outer dome are both bonded and fixed together and fixed to the ring. Uh, these panels, as I say, are just stuck down temporarily for now. Uh, the centre one is tacked down. That one's tacked down, but these are all still loose. As I say, I might, I don't know, I might make them open up on a little hinge yet. Uh, maybe not all of them, maybe just one or two. I think the periscope would normally be, where's the front? Periscope would be this one, I think, next to the hollow projector. So, might do that, not sure. At the moment I'm just re rearranging the house to get the droids somewhere to live uh, away from the window so that um, they're not on show. I don't want them going, going missing. As you can see, I'm rearranging the place. I'm in a heck of a mess at the moment, but we need uh, I need somewhere to keep these guys out of the way, safe and sound and sort of you know, not, not in the middle of the living room, so I thought I'm going to use this wasted space under my stairs for now, and that can be the little droid corner. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we'll see. Uh, these are some of the bits that I'm sort of starting to prepare. And I've got some bits in the shed that I've just painted, or I'm priming, so I'll go and show you how that's going. Basically, I'm priming the rest of the uh, the rest of the panels for the dome so that they can dry and that paint can really set properly out of harm's way. If I put them in a bag 
uh, you know, with things resting on them that might get marked, you might get little indentations on. So I figured the safest place for them for a while when I'm working on the body is going to be on the dome. So um, hence tacking them. Okay, so I've got three three coats of primer on all the um, aluminium panels for R2. So it's time to add some colour. Now I've got a few tins of this. Um, I don't know if it's the right colour, but I think it's pretty close. It's quite nice. It's um, 135S blue metallic. It's plastic coat. Uh, it's enamel, fast drying enamel. And the panels I've done so far look quite good. So um, I'll get some colour on here and uh, see what you think. Okay, well, a little bit of a uh, disaster in the meantime. I had bought <coughs> three tins of this, um, this plastic o paint. Um, I like the paint, it's great, but I just, um, I don't know if you can see the little splatters of paint everywhere here. They're actually all over the camera, the floor, me, and the table on the other side of the room, the shed. And basically, I picked it up, took the cap, took the cap off, shook it, the cap was loose you know the, the nozzle was loose so I put the nozzle back in and as I pushed it in it just exploded just just paint everywhere the nozzle shot back out and it's just just absolutely paint everywhere in the moment so it's now probably emptying itself into the recycle bin so um, yeah nightmare alright it's not the cost it's just the fact that it's faulty and uh, they only had three and I'm down to two of them so I think I'm gonna have to order some more in but uh, anyway what do you think of the paint colour I think that's not too bad if the, if the tins work. <laughs> um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry actually on the dome as well. Because um, one of the guys from the club was asking me what, what paint I was using and uh, I'm assuming that means he, th he quite likes it, he thinks it's a good colour match. So anyway, uh, back shortly. Okay, so that's what the colour looks like when it's on the dome. That's in daylight. I'll put a little bit of electric light over the top of it. So it's quite a nice finish. I haven't lacquered it or anything. May well do, but so far I've not lacked it. That's just how it how it comes. So yeah, I think it's well. Let me know in the comments. I think that's not far off. 